to this new episode of the Saba Speaks podcast, bringing you all sorts of news and discussions of the brass band world. As you may have noticed, we are not Iona McVicker or Laura Carter. We are your new hosts, Charlie Bokes and Andrea Crumlish. In this episode, we will be discussing a topic that is very important to both of us, and that is the National Youth Brass Band of Scotland, also known as NIBS. But first, we would like to take a brief moment to introduce ourselves. So I'll start off. Um, as you guys already know, my name is Charlie Bokes. Uh, I play the baritone. Um, but first, I was in the trombone. And then when I was eight, moved to baritone. Um, and currently, I play for the Whitburn Band. I am Andrea Crumlish. I play tenor horn. I've been playing that for five years now. And I played cornet for about four years before that. I currently play with Riverside Youth Band and Brass Sounds Inverclyde. I am 17 years old and I'm in my last year at school, so I'm in sixth year at Grange Academy in Kilmarnock. I have just recently started my studies at the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland. So I've been going to NIB since, well, the early stage you could go. I've been going since I was nine. In fact, I was kind of going even before that because obviously... I was dragged along to Easter course and everything from like the age of five or whatever. So, um, yeah, but I've been playing at Nibs since I was nine. Um, yeah. And my most recent seat was sitting principal baritone in the senior Nibs band. So I have been going to Nibs since 2018. Um, and I was on Cornet back then. And then I went back the next year on horn. My most recent seat in Nibs was solo horn in the senior band. Now, we've only been going to Nibs for a short time compared to how long it has been running for. Nibs was first founded in 1958 by SAMA, the Scottish Amateur Music Association. It was then taken over by the Scottish Brass Band Association in March 2011. Some of the previous conductors of the Nibs band include Bryden Thompson, Geoffrey Brand, Richard Evans and Russell Gray. Over the years, Nibs has seen the addition of the children's band for players aged 9 to 13 and the reserve band for players 14 plus who are not yet in the youth band but to help them develop as players as they work towards becoming a member of the Nibs, which is often to referred to as the senior band, to help distinguish it from the Nibs course as a whole. The current conductor of this is Ian Porthouse, while Alan Fernie conducts the children's band and John Bokes for the reserve band. Speaking of the current conductors of the different Nibs bands, we've invited them to discuss Nibs and share their experiences in banding.
And now we're joined by Ian Porthouse, the conductor of the senior band. So, Ian, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, thanks, Charlie. I'm I'm Ian. Um, I look after the the senior band and have done for quite a few years now. We had a, a bit of a gap during uh, COVID. We did what we what we could, but uh, yeah. So I, I I look after the senior band. I'm uh, the musical director of Tredegar Band and uh, head of brass band studies at Royal Birmingham Conservatoire. Thank you. So you've mentioned that you're doing all sorts of conducting. So how long have you been conducting for? Oh, uh, good, good question. You put put me on the spot now. Probably <laughs> around, probably getting on for uh, thirty years. Um, so, so for probably the last ten or twelve years that I was playing full time, I was conducting as well. Not not regularly, obviously, because it's it's impossible really to to do both properly. Um, but I, yeah, I, the first conducting experience I had was. With my the band actually I started to play with in uh, up in West Cumbria the Flimby Saxon Silver Band, and they needed a conductor for a for a contest. And my, my dad was still playing with the band at the time, and said, "Do you fancy conducting the band for a competition?" And I said, uh, "I'd quite like to do it, but I've never conducted anything ever, <laughs> other than maybe a sectional or or a small group." And uh, so I said, "Well, I, I'll try. I'll, I'll I'll try and do my best." And um, Went along, did a few rehearsals, did a lot of practice at home uh, to work out what I was meant to be doing, and um, I really enjoyed it. And it's sort of, it's sort of been an interest of mine ever ever since. So it so it started, but not by accident, but by necessity, really. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. So, how long have you been conducting at Nibs for? At Nibs. Um, I should I should know that exactly, shouldn't I? I think I've done four courses, um, one of which was, uh, you know, a bit strange bit that we had no audience or anything like that. Um, yeah. So so Nibs was something that um, I spoke with for a long time prior to to starting with with uh, Richard Evans. Obviously, he was he was there for a, a, a very long time. Richard was a, a huge influence on my career from. Probably about age fourteen, I, I, I was a member of the Cumbria Youth Brass Band with with Richard conducting, and um, he said he, he said you know come and come and do some work with uh, with Nibs, and uh, so I went along and uh, absolutely love it. It's a, it's a, it's one of the highlights of my year, and uh, you know there's some we have a short short time, don't we, at uh, at Easter, and then the full the full week course at uh, in the summer, which is uh, this year was especially. Brilliant! I think we're really uh, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, this year I think people were actually talking about. They were saying, "I think that's the strongest I've heard the band in a long time." So people were really impressed with the standard we were playing. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this year as well. Um, but moving on to the next question, uh, what has been your favourite conducting moment ever? That could be at Nibs, or I mean, you could give us a Nibs one and one outside wow. of Nibs. Wow. I would have to say, as as, uh, as Nibs goes, that's really easy. That was uh, the, doing uh, Alan's new piece, Organum, um, this year. Um, it was not just the performance, but the whole project of rehearsing this this brand new piece. It's always exciting, isn't it, working on a new piece? But when it's a a piece of such a, such a high quality and I have to say a little bit unexpected from 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 Alan. We 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 are, we're all very familiar with Alan's what we can we shouldn't really say is normal writing because it's there's, there's no normal writing. But this was something that uh, we weren't expecting and uh, were thoroughly uh, well honoured to be involved in the premiere performance. And it's 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 a it's a piece I'm sure Alan's very proud of it, and and I'm very proud that Nibs that uh, of Nibs that we, for, we got the chance. To, to give that world premiere performance, so so that's that's my favourite Nibs performance. Um, as far as as conducting, I would have to say probably conducting at the BBC Proms last year with Tradiga was was an amazing, slightly surreal experience because we we all watched the Proms performances on TV and then for the band to be to be there and the audience um, you know up, lapping up. We we played all sorts of music, you know traditional band stuff to classical arrangements to to pop pop music and they they were so receptive of of everything so i would i would say that they 
those so Alan's pace and uh, the problems last year. That's amazing. No, I remember me and my dad came to the problems actually last year. Um, and I can't remember what you played. Was it? Oh, this might be. I might embarrass myself here, but was it Concerto Grosso? That yeah. was a, the, the big piece. I I, I didn't yeah. conduct that one. I played in that one. I would. I, yeah. I wish I, I wish I could have uh, conducted because it's easier than playing the parts. The parts <laughs> are incredibly difficult. But yeah, that was that was a special night. Absolutely. Yeah, amazing. it was it was incredible. I loved it. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned when you were talking about how long you've been conducting at Nibs um, and like your favourite moments uh, about your uh, thoughts on Nibs now. So what were your initial thoughts on Nibs compared to what they are now? Well, I, I mean, it was a difficult... We, 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 the first course I did was really promising. We, we were, you know, we, we t- tackled a few tricky pieces and then... Um, I mean, Charlie probably remembers that. I'm not sure. Andrea, were you there the first one when we, we talked about doing um, fraternity for the next year? Yes. Just, yeah. Yes. And that was the plan. But then something happened, didn't it? The old uh, yeah. COVID, COVID happened, um, which really obviously meant that we couldn't do anything in 2020. Um, 2021 um, was, was the unusual course, wasn't it? 22. We were getting back on our feet, uh, and now I think we're stronger than we were on that first course. So, um, so for me, Nibs is a really exciting time. The band is the band is quite young, you know. They, 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 it's it's not a, you know we don't have loads of twenty one year olds on all the principal positions. We have some quite young players in in, in very senior positions in the band, and the the strength throughout the band. Is um, is very very healthy at the moment. So I'm hoping that um, we, we'll, youth bands. It's always a little bit difficult, isn't it? Because it tends to go a little bit in cycles. And you, we have a really strong band, and then all of those strong players get to the same age at the same round about the same mm-hmm. time, and we sort of have to start again then. But I'm hoping that we, because we have a you know a really good group of young players, that this is you know we're 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 in a good position for quite a long time, and you know. If we keep bringing our new new players in, you, you know, um, you know, John's band and Alan's band, the the, the uh, reserves and the the children's bands are very strong and they're getting great tuition straight away. So I think we're in a very uh, strong position, and I'm definitely excited about what we can uh, what we can achieve in, over the next few years. So you mentioned there, obviously, about players coming in and having cycles of people who progress as they move along. So how how does that affect your choice in choosing music? Because you never know like when the players will leave or when they'll stay. So how what's your thought process choosing music yeah, for them? I, I think if we try and plan it too accurately, I'll end up never picking any pieces at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think... I've got to, it's trying to get that balance between challenging the players and and not uh picking music that's that's just unplayable by a young band but I have to say not just nibs but most young bands that I've uh, worked with if you set the challenge they always meet it even in the first rehearsal where we may think okay maybe this is just a little step too far um you know we have a great team of tutors that can uh, do all the sectional work, and it's amazing. Three or four days in, we get a little chink of light, at the end, thinking, "Oh, maybe we can do this." So, um, so the, the the choice of music is going to be quite ambitious over the next few years, definitely. Looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. So, from this year, what was your absolute favourite part out with? the conducting side of Nibs? I, th- I think we've already mentioned uh, Alan's Organum uh, piece, which was, I think, for the, for the players, probably the, the biggest achievement. But um, for, for me, it's just it's the whole week, the way the band develops so quickly and gets a sense of um, unity as a group because, uh, you know, Scotland's a big place, isn't it? And uh, you, you don't get together that often as a band um i mean the, the the concert we did outdoors in the in the shadow of the of the castle was amazing um you know and we had a crowd of there's maybe a couple of hundred people or 300 two or 300 people stopped and 
um, you know, the, the atmosphere we created there was the, their memories that I certainly I will remember for a long time. But as a young player myself, I remember doing uh, projects like that with, with the Cumbria Youth Band, with the National Youth Band of Great Britain. And they're, they're things that I still remember now as highlights of, of my own playing career. And uh, I hope that the, the players, our current players, will, will cherish those memories. And then watching the band up on the, the big stage with the Grit Orchestra, of which we didn't really know what to expect when we rehearsed just our own parts in the, in the school at Strath Allen. And we thought, OK, this is, uh, this is OK, but I don't know if it's going to be that great. When we heard it with the full orchestra and all of the, you know, the big percussion sections, it was absolutely brilliant. So, again, you know, there, there, there are lots of elements to the course. But, but for me, the main satisfaction is from going from that first rehearsal to our finished performances and, and seeing the, the musical development, but also the way that the band um, gels as, as a group. On 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 and off the stage because um, I've said it before that the the um, the Scottish banding world is in very safe hands with you young people because you're not only very good players but you've also got a lot about yourselves as as hu young human beings. There's a lot of humour there. There's some wicked senses of humour that uh, that we have to keep keep under control at times. <laughs> but it's it, but it's one of the things that uh, endears me to. To nibs is is that sort of spirit and determination, and all done with good humour. So, Ian, as you mentioned, you're obviously a player yourself. Um, played for many amazing bands, um, and I just want to know who has been the person who has been your hero or your inspiration in your musical journey in your career. Um, too many. How long have you got? <laughs> uh, I I'm think, saying. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll try and pick a few out because uh, there are really some really important uh, people who who have influenced me. I mean, in the the very early days, my dad, uh, my, my my dad's eighty eighty four now, still plays. Um, you know, he, so he was a big. He taught me to play essentially, and he got me got me going. And then we've already mentioned Richard Evans. So I met Richard at a very early age and. Through you know, I spent probably ten years working, you know, playing playing for for Richard as as his principal cornet player at the, the youth band and um and at Leyland Vehicles Band as it as it was then. Then uh, from a again not not just a playing experience, but for for conducting James Watson was a huge influence on my career. I played for for Desford Band and Black Dyke with Jim, um, and then virtually every conductor or player I've come into contact with, I think I've learned something, whether you remember it at the time, there's just an influence. Um, as, as a player, um, my my hero or heroes were always Maurice Murphy, still is. I think he, he would be, if, if, if uh, I was, somebody said you can listen to one brass player um, one last time, it would be Morris Murphy playing anything. I don't really care what it, what it would be. Just Morris, just give me a tune, that, that or, or the Star Wars soundtrack or anything like that that Morris plays. <laughs> but also, you know, in my era, we were all listening to uh, LPs. Do you remember? You seen those things? Those black flat discs records. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're quite trendy again now, I think, aren't they? Um, yes. Jim Shepherd. Philip McCann, they were the players that that we were aspiring to uh, emulate as as young players. Um, but along the way, I've, I'm, I'm, I still listen to to recordings of brass players every single day. I mean, it's easy now. You can be in the car. You can just listen to all sorts of uh, all sorts of different different brass players. So, uh, yes. but I think I think Richard Evans, Jimmy Watson, and Maurice Murphy. If I had to put three. Uh, big influences on my career. Yeah, they are incredible music legends in the Rasman world. Incredible. Yeah. Um, but another question I have, this is more on your conducting career. Uh, obviously, you've done many like collaborations with Tredegar. Um, I think my mum mentioned something about a potato or something. Yeah. Old guy in a potato. <laughs> a big potato with uh, David Williams and Matt. 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 
anyway, I shouldn't know his name. We did a song with him, but obviously we, we were all we were all in our offices and bedrooms recording. <laughs> yeah, that was a slightly bizarre one. Yeah. Yeah. So you do many like obviously that's a bizarre one. You've done the proms. Um, do you think that it's quite an innovative and interesting way of putting brass bands in a different perspective? Do you think that's very important for people to see brass bands in a different light? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, it's not so much in a, in a different light. It's just I think lots of people don't really know what brass bands can do. Um, you know, we, we have this stereotypical um, idea that brass bands play mainly hymns, marches and arrangements of light orchestral music. And, of course, we do those things. Um, but it's gen you know generally we play to uh, audiences who know what they go to a band concert knowing what to expect, and what I like to do sometimes is is take the band a little bit out of our comfort zone and and pitch it to to people who don't really know what the band uh, what the bands can do and. 99% of the time, the reaction is always really positive. And I feel as though we're then spreading our amazing brass band movement just a little bit a little bit wider. I don't deliberately see it as a crusade or anything like that, but yeah. I, I think we should be very proud of what we can do as brass band musicians. Um, and, and maybe even the term brass band musician, we should just get away from that. We're just musicians. We happen to play brass instruments in a certain uh, instrumentation. Um, and it's, it's, it's amazing that, that um, other musical um, organisations are so welcoming of what we can do as a brass band. We just have to put ourselves in that situation. And it's something I, I'll certainly continue to do in, whether it involves baked potatoes or the problems, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, you never know what's around the corner. Yeah, I totally agree. I uh, sometimes speak to people from school or something, and I say, I play the baritone. They go, oh, what's that? Is that a tuba or a trumpet? And then I'm like, no, it's small tuba, and I explain it. And then they go, oh, do you play in an orchestra? I'm like, no, a brass band. And then you see them look confused because nobody knows what a brass band is, so it's good that... There's bands like Tradigar promoting it and showing awareness of them. Um, yeah, it's really good. So one of our favourite questions to ask anyone in an interview is what is your most embarrassing moment? And the, for you, it would be your most embarrassing moment when conducting. In conducting? Um, I've got a few, actually. Um, <laughs> the, my most embarrassing one will probably be... Um, and I think they both happened in the same concert. So Tradiga were playing. We did a concert in Shrewsbury Abbey, which is a huge church, really beautiful church, amazing acoustic. Um, and the, the two embarrassing things were that uh, we played, if we actually played this piece at Nibs, we played a piece a few years ago called The Smile, which is a collection of uh, little snippets of hymn tunes. And there there's some soloists dotted dotted around the uh, the hall, the cornet, soprano, trombone, and uh, they all play a phrase of various hymns at different times. Well, Tradiga, we we did this in, um, in Shrewsbury Abbey, but we didn't really have time to rehearse it. So the soprano player went to the back of the church, Dowie, the principal cornet, he went to the other side of the church, but we didn't work out that there's about a two-second delay in the uh, in the abbey, so the piece was just really long notes and pregnant pauses, uh, waiting for the next soloist to come in. Who was, the soloists were watching what I was doing, but by the time the band sound got to them, that was uh, it was all just a bit out of sync. So uh, oh, fortunately, the, fortunately, the audience didn't hadn't heard the piece before, so they didn't know if it was if it was right or wrong. So so that was the first embarrassing moment of that concert. The second embarrassing moment was during uh, Dowie Griffiths' uh, solo. He, he was playing a, a traditional cornet solo called the Paragon. Lots of cornet players, I'm sure, will be aware of that. So I gave Dowie this this introduction to the uh, to the to the piece, and the audience welcoming him to the to the podium. And um, I forgot that it starts with a beautiful slow melody. And so I, in my brain, I went, "What do?" 
like this. <laughs> and the band went, Bobby Doddy. I think that's the closest I've ever been to having a heart attack on stage because the band did something <laughs> totally different to what I was expecting. So there were my two embarrassing moments all in one concert. So I'm, I'm, I've never I've never done a concert in Shrewsbury Abbey since. Oh, my goodness. Um, so we're nearing the end of our questions, um, but a few more we have is there's been projects in previous years with Nibs. Um, there was Japan in 2008. Um, and then Norway in 2016. And there are a few people dying to know this question. And it's if you would be up to doing a tour with the band. And, like, hopefully soon. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I mean, we can't say too much, but the, there has been discussions about trying to get the band abroad um which is a, few, a couple of years ago we couldn't even think about that with the travel situation but things are a bit more normal now um a tour is a as, as i've got older and and got more involved in how bands run when, when i was young and played for leyland band and black dyke band and we went on tour and it, and it wasn't the players problem you know that we were just told okay we leave at this time and we go on this flight and we get on this coach but i understand now that those things just don't happen all by themselves there's an incredible amount of organization that goes but there's i would absolutely love to take this band abroad i'm i'm fortunate to work you know a, a lot in, in in norway and austria and holland and, and i know that the band in uh communities out there would relish hearing uh what nibs has to offer so um yes definitely. oh i think exciting times are ahead for everyone listening i hope so, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah i think i think that sounds very very exciting and exciting it's it's really what nibs is it's just exciting um one of my favorite moments from nibs this year um i am going to link into the the last question mm. and this last question is, what did you think of my oh-so-awesome scream in The Devil and I? Well, that, uh, that piece is meant to be frightening, isn't it? It is meant to be <laughs> really frightening. And for, for the way you threw yourself into that role, um, because normally, I mean, it, it, it was originally um, a, a thrash metal song so quite loud um normally with a, with when we did that with Tridiger at Brassy concert obviously there's only 30 players you had getting on for 65 players to try and compete against and without without um without uh, being offensive here andre your your voice had no problem projecting above the band thank goodness for that <laughs> i didn't expect that I did not expect a scream in the middle of the piece. I remember actually getting a fright myself. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I would. That's one of those moments I would have liked to have been not facing the band. I would like to have been looking at the uh, at the audience to see their reaction. But uh, <laughs> it it certainly gave, gave us a little humorous moment in the band as well, didn't it? Yeah, it yeah just, definitely. All in the spirit of nibs. Yeah, we, <laughs> we'll have a go at anything. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you, Ian, for letting us interview. We've definitely found out a lot of interesting things that we did not know before. And hopefully a tour is in the works for future years at NIPS. So thank you so much. My pleasure. No problem. Of course, it's not just the conductors having a great time at NIBS. The students have fun too, believe it or not. As we have mentioned, we both attend NIBS ourselves. So, Andrea, what's your... Memories on Nibs, like your favourite and your least favourite? Well, my most recent favourite memory of Nibs was the course this year. We played The Devil and I, and I got to stand up in the middle of the piece and scream. It was great. I loved it. It was iconic. It really was. <laughs> Whereas, going back all the years to 2018, my first year at Nibs, I have a favourite memory from them too. It was the solo competition. I wasn't taking part though, but 
one of the Chuba players played Chuba Smarties and he kept taking in really big breaths while playing <laughs> and everyone who was watching started breathing along every like what was that like two bars or something oh my gosh oh god I don't know if you remember that or not no I actually don't I don't <laughs> who was it um, I think, yes, it must have been. It must have been. Was it Robert? Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't remember that. I wish I did, though. Oh, it was great. We were all just breathing in sync as a <laughs> collective. <laughs> it must have been the most awkward thing ever, though. The fact you noticed it and then everyone was just doing it. Um, But I think my favourite memory at Nibs... I think it has to have been. <laughs> Let me think. Oh my gosh, I can actually know what my favourite memory of Nibs was. When Glenn Williams and Helen Williams came to Nibs, and I think I was 10 or 11, it was 2017, I think. I've actually still got the photo up downstairs in our garage. Um, and they came to Nibs, and they're literally, I idolise them. Like, I, I love them. Um, because obviously Corey, I love that band. <laughs> um, but that was that when I was younger. I was um, Glenn was like, still is. Um, Glenn is a big hero of mine. Um, and I, I remember just being like starstruck when I met him. I was like, oh my goodness, it's Glenn and Helen. Like it was, it was just amazing. It was incredible. Um, and then probably my least favourite do I have a least favourite though I don't think I do actually yeah I can't think of a least favourite no I think it's just that great it is it is actually really good like there's not there's never parts I don't enjoy um but yeah no I think I think that's probably my memories on nibs I'm trying to think have I had any funny or embarrassing moments at nibs um I don't really say it's embarrassing. I just find it a little funny. It was this year, actually. Um, me and Katie were in the, um, the talent show. And I was tuning my ukulele. And it was horribly out of tune. And I'm just standing there tuning it. And out loud, I didn't even notice that it was so out, like so loud. I actually just went, ugh, as I was tuning it. <laughs> repulsed by the sound that's played by your ukulele so what about you do you have any like funny or embarrassing moments um i'd probably i'm actually trying to think like this is really bad i've got the worst memory i've got the memory like dory from finding nemo i'm actually <laughs> i'm actually trying to think um Funny moments are just like, I'd say there's always something funny every year at the talent show. There's always one comedy act. Um, I think, oh gosh, I can't actually think. I don't really know if I've got a funny moment from this. <laughs> um, yeah, well, we'll move on from that. Embarrassing moment is probably just being embarrassed by the amount of talking that my mum does. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not. <laughs> she could talk for Britain. She really could. Um, in fact, I think it was this year or last year, one of one of the people in the senior band timed my mum's speech at the beginning. So every year, you begin in nibs. My mum always does an introduction, and you think, oh, it must be like fifteen minutes max. Thirty-five minutes. She was. They literally timed it. She was thirty-five minutes. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, how could she speak for that long and by the end of the week she still has a voice like sometimes, <laughs> so, sometimes yeah sometimes um but yeah those are probably my yeah embarrassing funny ish moments <laughs> do you not think nibs is really important oh yes very yeah it should be be included in everyone's lives yeah yeah me too um i think that it's especially important for obviously building on your plane, but also not that Nibs is all about the social aspects, but 
it is good socially and it helps you like say you go to a brass band con- contest or whatever, like the Scottish Open or the Scottish Championships, you see your friends from like Stranraer, Campbelltown, Fife, the Borders. It's it builds builds your relationships from people with different places as well as the experience you gain from the tutors that you work with. Yeah, you mentioned like having friends all over the place. I made a new friend at NIMS, well, I made a few, but I made a new friend at NIMS last year, and I knew that he lived in the general area of where my caravan is. Yeah. And I went to my caravan in October last year. I took a picture of just some random houses, and he's like, what are you doing down here? And I was like, oh, I'm away to my caravan. And he's like, wait, where's your caravan? So I sent him a photo of where it is, and he's like, no way! Turned out, that it was actually just across from the street he lives on. Really? Mental. That's such a coincidence. But yeah, no, it's like that's like me. I um the people who I'm still friends with them, but they don't go to Nibs anymore. They live in like Dumfries and Galloway area. I know, sadly they don't go to Nibs anymore. Um but I remember I'd go down to my caravan and and uh, one of my friends from the Face and Galloway area, where my caravan is situated, she just come over and have a couple nights stay. And it's just, it's good that you could go somewhere, like in Scotland, and you could have friends from there and just meet up with them. Like it's nice that way. Um, and actually, I think for me, I actually, I'm really close friends with people from Nibs than I am with other people back at home. Like, I'm closer with them, but I think it's probably because of the brass bands in common kind of thing. But I find that, like, the relationships that you build at Nibs, they they literally last forever. Seriously. Um, It's it's, it's amazing. But, yeah, and the tutors, the incredible tutors with a wealth of experience that you get taught by, you don't actually realise how... Like I don't realise how lucky I am like to be working with these incredible players, but yeah. Yeah, you mentioned the tutors. This year's um horn tutor was Shona Wade. Or is she Shona White now? I always get it mixed up because it both starts with W. Yeah. And she also was there last year and she adjudicated the reserve band competition in which I took part. And I just remember nailing the last note it's a top d it was an absolute screecher of a note but i nailed it i'm <laughs> so happy about it and then like not even just that like, i got great feedback from a great player who i play the same instrument as and it was great i loved it speaking of the nibs uh solo contest this year for our children in reserve band uh, the adjudicators were Sean Reese jones our euphonium tutor for the senior band, and Ryan Richards, our trombone tutor for the senior band. The adjudicator of the senior band this year was William McMillan. And I took part in the solo contest this year, and I found that his crit sheet was very useful. I do like a good crit sheet. Me too. What sort of... What sort of things were you thinking when you had your crit sheet? Well, I think that whenever I get a crit back, I know some people are always like, I know some people um, who will get a crit sheet back and look at it and look, look at all, look at these things that they're telling them, which is just guidance from the adjudicator. And they'll take it negatively as if they're saying they did it wrong, but it's not. It's just they're giving you ways to improve for the next time that you do a solo contest. Like, I feel like crits shouldn't be taken negatively. They should be up, they should be taken as a way to build on your playing to make it even better for next time. Because, I mean, there's always going to be something that it's just the adjudicator's there to try and help you and tr- try and guide you in what your next step should be. So I always take it as um, building on my present playing to improve in the future. Yeah, I, I completely agree with what you're saying there. That's like what I nowadays take credit sheets for. Back when I was younger, like I didn't see it that way. Oh no, me too. Don't worry. 
Me too. <laughs> so, I'm just going to say this. Charlie won the solo contest this year. Woo! Um, <laughs> let's t- tell us more. Tell us more, Charlie. Um, so, this year, uh, I took part in the solo contest. Um, I do it every year, I think. I don't know if I've... Well, it's at the year of COVID. So, um, yeah, but... How many people took part again? There was quite a big number. Yeah. 18, 17? A good amount. A good amount of people. I think it was the most I've ever heard of. Um, And I played With His First Breath by Paul Lovett Cooper, which is a beautiful slow piece, and it's all about the first breaths of a child, basically. Um, And I chose this piece because... I love to storytell whenever I play music. So, and I love to make the audience like get emotional. Don't know why. It's not as if I want to make them cry or anything. Like, I don't mean it like that. I just mean, I feel like, as people say, like music is emotive, and that's kind of why I chose it. And um, also, my dad loves the piece. So I kind of played it for him as well. Um, but yeah, I just love playing it. Um, beautiful and I took part because um, I don't know it's just just wanted to do it kind of so um, obviously it's quite a I mean you're winning the Richard Evans trophy that's prestigious in itself so I wanted to put myself forward and try and win it so when you were on stage how were you feeling? Um, I'd say generally whenever I play like in solo contests or solos in general I'm always nervous like I get quite nervous not nervous to the extent where like I'm, I'm worried or anything I just get nervous because I mean as my dad always says if you're not nervous like if people don't get nervous then they're just not human like it's just part of playing a solo Um, and yeah, I think the main thing, see, when you're nervous is just you you focus on your breathing. You concentrate like mad and you focus on your breathing because breathing is your support. It's like 90% of your playing. And if you don't have good breathing, then I feel like you just you just lack the support that you need. Um, yeah, and also, you know what I like as well? I think it gives me a boost of confidence is when, see, when you go out and you smile at the adjudicator or someone... Like, I think that just gives me a boost of com- confidence. Like, I always feel... Because people smile back, normally. Um, people smile back, and it just makes me feel, okay, that's fine, I'm ready to do it. Um, but yeah, always nervous, but you just need to learn how to control it. So, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Great. Well, we've also asked the runners-up. Runner-ups? Runners-up, I yeah. never know. Yeah. I never know what I it is. But we've asked them um, from this year's senior band contest some questions about what they thought of the solo contest this year and like what their experiences were. So firstly, we've asked the third place prize winner, Rona Campbell. Um, Rona is a flugel player, originally from Campbelltown, um, and she played concert etudes at this year's contest. So we asked her why she chose this piece and why she took part. Her responses were, it's different to what she normally plays at solo competitions and she wanted to challenge herself. We also asked how she felt when on stage and her answer was completely understandable as she responded with, it wasn't as bad as I thought. You know what? I feel like people like that's, I've never heard of somebody saying that's how they felt on stage. I see people ask, like, ask people how they thought it went and they'd be like, oh my gosh, it was terrible. Or like... No panics and everything, but that is the most chill response I've ever heard. <laughs> um, but congrats to Rona on your third place uh, prize at the Senior Band Nib Solo Contest. We also spoke to the second place prize winner, Owen Campbell, unrelated. <laughs> he played the first movement of the Gregson Chuba Concerto. And when we asked him why he chose this piece, he said, I enjoy playing it. And it was one of the pieces I had been preparing for a recital, so I knew it was quite strong. Also, Gregson was quite a big brass band composer, so I thought it was quite fitting. 
As regards to taking part, he said that it was something he'd never really done before. He had done it last year, but wasn't really sure, so he felt that it was something worth doing. And then when he was on stage, he felt surprisingly relaxed. And he further stated, it was quite a safe environment to be playing in because you'd know everyone would be quite positive about it all. So he then said that he felt quite good. Which, yeah, I get that. I I completely get that. Before it, I might be a wee bit hmm about it. But you go on and it's not as bad as you think. Yeah, I think the fact it's Nibs as well, and as you said, you know everyone, it's also kind of like, ah, they're my mates and everything, like... It's it's nerves, you know. You know, it's. I feel like it probably will make you more relaxed because you know them and they're not just a bunch of strangers. But then, for me, I'd say playing in front of people, I know I get a wee bit more nervous because I know them, and it's like <laughs> supposed to do something wrong. They 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 know me, and they yeah. It's just it's just it's different for everybody, I guess. Yeah, <clears throat> I I find that too sometimes, like playing in front of friends when I was in school was always a bit strange. Yeah. But yeah, we push through it and we get on with it. Exactly. So, yeah, congratulations on your second place, Owen. We'd also like to congratulate the winners and their runners-up, runner-ups, potato-potato, <laughs> of the reserve band and children's band contests. The winner of the reserve band with performance on drum kit was Angus Crompton and runner-up was cornet player Charlie Colville. In third place for the children's band was euphonium player James Barr. In second place was Holly Reid on drum kit and first place went to Jamie Gillespie on trombone. Well done to all of you. Summing up things in one word can be difficult, especially when it's something you love because... Obviously, you have so much to say about it. So we've set the challenge to some NIB students to sum up NIBs in one word. And here are just some of the responses we got. Ambitious. Exhilarating. Inviting. Supportive. Opportunity. Immersive. Excitement. Inspiring. Exciting. Family. Encouraging. This is an interesting one, by the way. A few people might not know what this word means, but some people said slay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fun. Togetherness. Musical. And educational. What about you? What if you had to sum it up in one word? I mean, I think slay is definitely one of the words. <laughs> I would use. <laughs> um, but... Probably, I honestly would say, I can't, I don't even think I could sum up nibs in one word, but there's a few that stick out in my mind when I think of nibs. It's probably to, like family. Nibs is a huge family. And I've known that, like, even before I went to nibs and I was just tagging along, I could see it was a huge family because obviously, you know, there, you all love brass bands, you all, like, you all have things in common, you make, amazing lifelong friends and it's just a huge family and everyone everyone's so like kind and caring um and the other one that sticks out in my mind is inspiring as I've said we work with so many tremendous tutors who have a wealth of experience and sometimes I don't realize like these people are so incredible like in their playing oh out of this out of this world what, what, what about you, Andrea? I couldn't really think of anything that wasn't 20 different answers. <laughs> <laughs> but the one word that I think sticks out the most to me is brilliant. Yes, as I totally agree. Absolutely brilliant. And he, oh my gosh, I've got to add another favourite memory. The silent disco. Oh, I love the silent disco. I totally forgot about it. <laughs> silent disco. It's incredible. And the amount the amount of like conga lines that we get going outside <laughs> is great. It's it's huge. Um but that's probably just to add to my other favourite memories. That family and the excitement and 
you know, togetherness. The silent disc was part of it. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of this episode. Oh, boo. I know. Before we finish, I would like to quickly say in response to last year's Nibs episode of this podcast, the song that Laura and Iona wanted to remember the name of was Jim the Juice Man. Jim the Juice you Man. Know, you know. Iconic. I remember that, actually. I remember it. And so to finish with, we asked the Scottish Brass Band Association president and the course director of NIBS, Carrie Box, to sum up NIBS in one word. If you know Carrie, you know she will have faced great challenge to say just the one word instead of the usual several thousands. Several thousands. But the impossible has become possible, believe it or not. And so her response was, drum roll please. I'm going to quickly get her. She's in. <laughs> I'll run. How's that for timing? <laughs> awesome! And that is all for today. Thank you for listening to this with your new hosts, Charlie Bokes and Andrea Crumlish. And we will see you in the next episode of Saba Speaks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>